Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and unto his sons, and unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying. Okay, now we're another topic. What man soever there be of the house of Israel, Jewish, that killeth an ox, or lamb or goat in the camp or that kills it out of the camp either inside the camp or out of the camp and bringeth not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer an offering unto the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord blood shall be imputed unto that man he has shed blood and the man shall be cut off from among his people. Okay, now the subject here, it looks like, you know, okay, any man that kills an animal is in trouble. And what the subject of this verse is, he's got a sacrifice, and it's for God. And he just kills that animal anywhere where he feels like, whether it be in Israel or out of Israel. He does not bring his sacrifice to Jerusalem, which will be the city where it will be stand by God to bring your offering. And what this is promoting and what this is saying is, I don't want the children of Israel to say, you know, stop, drop, and sacrifice anywhere where you feel like it. God is going to set a place. He's going to set Jerusalem. He's going to already set the tabernacle as it's moving. And later on, that place will be Jerusalem. And as far as right now, it's a tabernacle. They're all set up by camps. And what this is saying, well, you know what? I got a sacrifice for God. He steps out the door of his tent and then, boom, kills the animal right there in the blood. That's not where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be at the door of the tabernacle. It's supposed to be at the temple. So there's one place and there's one God. And later on, you're going to read in Jeremiah, when you read through your Bible, everywhere, as many as streets there were in Jerusalem, there were temples and there were altars and there were uh, green places and there were any God, every God, and all the stars of God. That's not what God wanted. God did not want a temple on every street corner. Not in the Old Testament. We're in the Old Testament. We're dealing with the children of Israel. He wanted one place to sacrifice. Now later on when you get in the book of Acts. Then you go house to house to house to house. But not in the Old Testament. To the end that the children of Israel may bring their sacrifices. Which they offer in the open field. Even that they may bring them unto the Lord. Unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Unto the priest and offer them for a peace offering unto the Lord. You bring your sacrifice to the priest at the temple. That's the way to do it. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Lord. That's the brazen altar. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And burn the fat for the sweet savor unto the Lord. So. If I can say it like this and still be righteous to the Bible and not defile the Bible there is one barbecue pit for God and that's at the temple at the tabernacle 
God don't want little barbecue pits in the backyard for sacrificing to God. God wants you to serve God, and God does not want you to serve anybody else but him in that one place. And if your family don't want to go, your friends don't want to go, you, as of this day, I am going to serve the Lord, and you go. You don't stay. Which is a good uh, thing that we are under grace, because under the law, three times a year you're supposed to go to Jerusalem. Now, we can serve the Lord in our living room. We can serve the Lord at a, at a church building. We can serve the Lord in the middle of the jungle. We can plead the blood of Jesus Christ wherever we are. That's grace. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils. Egypt. All the devils of Egypt. Of all the heathen are going to be around them. And in the Hebrew that word is a he goat. Harry. The god of Mendetes. As an example. It's any god. But here the Hebrew. It, it's spoken as the hairy one. And whom they have gone a whoring. Oh there's, there's a good word. When you mention the word whore, you, you think of sexual relations. And yet that's probably one of the things that's going on with these with these worship of fallen gods. There's two things mentioned with these gods. Actually three. Food, death, and sex. When Aaron made that, that, that uh, golden calf, they had a fellowship dinner and they were dancing. They had a god called Moloch, and they were burned their babies inside the, that furnace, which was a belly. And the long and the short of the story of that one is, is, is many of those babies were the product from a priest and a priestess that they weren't supposed to have children because they're supposed to be celebrated. So what do you do with, with the children that you don't want? It was post-abortion. The baby's been born, and you throw it to Moloch. Death. And then there were sexual relations, as with after Balaam, with Baal Peor, they were mixing with the women of Moab. And that's wrong. This shall be a statute forever and unto them throughout their generation. No more giving it to gods. Again, in Jeremiah's time, it is to anything and everything they're worshiping. Even, even Christmas trees. And making little wafers to the queen of heaven. And thou shalt say unto them. Whatsoever man that there be of the house of Israel. Or of the strangers. Gentiles. Which sojourn among you. That offers a burnt offering or sacrifice. And bringeth not unto the door of the tabernacle congregation. To offer it unto the Lord. Even that man shall be cut off from among his people. See, it's about that offering. You cannot today say with God's money, Oh, I'll give it to a charitable organization that does anything not with God. And many Christians do that. They will give money, not to God and to his purpose and to his service, but they'll give it to other things that they think is more important, whether it be politics or it be healing lips or, or children who, who got cancer or to, all kinds of things. And they have no ambassador of God. You say, well, how do you know that? Okay, follow your favorite, favorite charity. And say, listen, I'm a born-again Bible-believing Christian. I want to be part of your organization. And wherever you go, that I can go, I want to preach Jesus Christ to those people you're serving at. That, that hurricane or whatever. That earthquake, whatever. That tornado ravaged area. Or that hospital for children. Or the, those that, that country over there where, where they got children that, that need surgery. Let me be able to go over there and let me preach Jesus Christ, the gospel, according to the King James Bible, and see how quick they'll let you do it. And when they say, no, you can't do that, then they're not, they're not of God and you are giving to devils. 
I'm sorry. Uh, listen, there's a lot of things in this world that that seems to be right in the eyes of Satan, but God says, hey, if I'm not allowed in it, then it's a sin. And bring it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer it unto the Lord. Even that man shall be cut off from among his people. And you got to be careful with churches too. I've been in a few churches in my... I have given my offering to missionaries, or there's a track place that takes offerings, and I have not given but a little part to the church. I've still tithed, and I, I love the tithe, but I didn't give most of it to the church because I thought the idea of what the church was doing with the money, hey, I ain't godly. And I pray to the Lord, I say, Lord, I'm giving this offer, give it to these people more than that because I don't think they're doing right with your money. I want the service go to God. I don't want it go for pup tents and, and, and worldly things. Because that's the world. I want it to go for God and godly things. So you got to be careful. So verse 10. And whatsoever man. That's Jewish. Gentile. Right Jew. Wrong Jew, right Gentile, wrong Gentile. There be of the house of Israel. So whatever tribe you're in, male or female, or if the strangers, there's the Gentiles, whatsoever man, the house of Israel or the, or the stranger, that sojourn among you. Now sojourn means a temporary dwelling. In other words, you're going to put up in a hotel for a couple days and then you're going to go move on. We're sojourners here in the world as Christians. We're not living here. This is not our home. That eateth any manner of blood. Now we're going to touch another subject here. I will even set my face against the soul that eateth blood. And will cut him off from among his people. That's a serious business. We're going to look at more scripture on this one in a little bit. God has forbidden the Gentile, I'll say that first, and the Jew, no blood eating. He, knows how, he says eating. He doesn't say drink. He says eat. It's forbidden. We're going to see that in the New Testament. So let me say now, if you're going to do a magic trick and perform that a liquid is going to become someone's blood and you drink what you believe by a magic potion is the blood of that man God says I'll set that my face against that soul see the strangers that's Gentile that's a church that celebrates a mass that will eat the blood of Jesus Christ. They will tell you, you talk to a priest, you talk to a nun, you talk to a devoted Catholic, you talk to their, their missile, you talk to their uh, Sunday school literature, you talk to their parochial school booklets, you talk to the catechism, and they will tell you beyond a shadow of doubt with their eyes looking at you without a liar. So that is the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you run to this verse, they'll say, oh, it's the Old Testament. Well, you guys are all under the Old Testament, but okay. I'll show you something later that shows it's New Testament. And we don't need to go back under uh, before the law because right now we're dealing with the law. The blood... It was forbidden before the law, here's the law, and after the law. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. You know what kills you? Impurities in your blood. If a cancer gets in that bloodstream, if a clot gets in that bloodstream, if a disease gets in that bloodstream, it will carry through your body and it will kill you. You know what else about that blood in you? The wages of sin is death. In our blood is sin. Passed on by our parents, passed on by their parents, and passed on by their parents going all the way back to the garden. 
How do you know that? Mary, when she bled to give birth to Jesus Christ, went to the temple and bought two turtle doves to relieve her of her sin because of the blood. We read a couple chapters ago, the other night, about when a person bleeds, he's leaking. <laughs> a woman who has her monthly period. When a man has an issue, he's unclean. And then once they are over that, then you got to go give a sin offering. So, the life of the flesh is the blood. I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. So, if somebody comes up to you and says... I belong to a church that's not the blood. I remember baptism. That's not the blood. I'm a 33 degree. That's not the blood. My mama. That's not the blood. I'm Catholic. That's not the blood. I'm charismatic. That's not the blood. Only the blood of Jesus Christ by Leviticus 17 verse 11 is the only means to be saved. Is the only means of the altar that God will accept. And that altar was called a cross. And the fire of that altar is when Jesus went into hell. And when you say that Jesus did not go to hell, where was the fire? Wasn't there a brazen altar? Didn't they burn the meat? Where was Jesus burned? In hell. What did he offer? Did he sprinkle everybody with? No. He spilt his blood. When that repentant thief repented to Jesus and got right, what was there for him to trust? The blood flowing from him. Acts 20:28, 20, the blood of God. So there's nothing else but the blood. Salvation is a bloody religion according to Leviticus 17.11. And there's no other means. If a Jew brought to that altar a bucket of water, it's going to put the fire out. How do you put church membership in that altar, that brazen altar to be burned? How do you do that? You are not going to put your family in that altar to burn. If God wouldn't receive that. It has to be blood. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel. No soul of you shall eat blood. Neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man that be of the children of Israel. Or of the stranger that sojourneth among you. Which hunteth. Or okay, he goes out hunting. And catches any beast or fowl. Deer or duck, bear or chicken, I don't know if you hunt chickens, or turkey, that may be eaten, clean animals. You go out and you hunt for a clean animal. He shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. So not only do you pour out the blood, do you cover it. Israel or strangers or Gentiles. For it is the life of the flesh again. The blood of it is the life thereof. Why does he keep saying that? Because Jesus Christ's blood is going to be the offering of life eternal for us. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel. Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. So you see why in John chapter 6 they got up Sit when Jesus says, Any man drink my blood? There it is. Would you think Jesus literally meant by what we're just reading in six verses? Jesus literally meant his blood? Absolutely not. Because if Jesus did that, he offended in one point in the law and he would be guilty of all the law. So the means of the Roman Catholic Church, John chapter 6, when Jesus said, drink my blood, we're doing that. They are calling him a sinner because James says, you offended one point. Here's, he would offend it in this point we're reading right now about blood drinking. 
He's talking about a spiritual sacrifice, not literal. And then when you go to a Jew, is Jesus a door? Well, yeah. I mean, literal. Is he a door with hinges? In it? No. You won't take that literal. But you take blood drinking literal, which is a violation of the Bible. Not just the law, the Bible. Before, during, and after the law. The children of Israel, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. And that's a Jew meant you went to hell. There's a lot of things in the in the in the law spoken about, not just murder and adultery. That if if a Jew did, you went to hell. There is no sacrifice for a Jew eating blood, as much as murder and adultery. And we're going to fall into that danger in a moment. And every soul, every soul, Jew or Gentile, that eateth that which dieth of itself. So, you're walking along somewhere and you see a dead animal. And you pick it up, you take it home, you eat it. Or that which has been torn a beast. You're walking down a path, there's an animal, lions attacked it, or somebody attacked it. You pick it up, and you take it home and eat it. Whether it be one of your own country, or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean the even, then shall he be clean. So it looks like you've been given a meal, and you sit down and you eat your meal, and then the guy says, oh yeah, that was roadkill. Oh, I just found out, I found out in my field, one of my cows, he just dropped dead and died. And so we butchered her. And the Bible says you're unclean. you got to wash and be clean. Every soul. Every soul. It didn't say just the children of Israel. But if he washed them not, nor bathed his flesh, he shall bear his iniquity. For eating that animal that's died on his own or torn the beast. Now we're dealing with a very serious subject here. Leviticus 4.2. And just this is just a nit this verse is nitpicking. I want to find the first place I could find for this verse. Leviticus 4.2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance. Against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do against any of them. Where now an ordinance and command set by God is drinking blood or eating blood. God said no. And you say, Brother Stiley, that's the law. We're under grace. You keep saying that. Okay. Let's go to Acts 15, 29. I'm going to burst your bubble. I'm going to burst your religion. Acts 15, 29. And we are in Acts 15. We are for sure. Acts 15, 29. We are for sure. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, after the resurrection, after the ascension of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has for surely died. He has for been buried. And according to the scriptures, he has surely risen from the dead. He has been ascended to God and is at the right hand of the Father. The church is in place. There have been people being saved, Jew and Gentiles, by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are in the church age in Acts 15, 29. And we'll start in verse 28. Now what happened is, a little brief little study here. Gentiles are getting saved. And the Jews are saying, well, they got to be circumcised. 
the law says be circumcised. But we're no longer under the Jew. So the subject is, okay, we're no longer under the Jewish law. We're grace. And we're going to sit down with the church members, the disciples, the apostles. We're going to sit down with Paul present. And we're going to say, you know what? What is the deal with this thing with the law? And salvation of the Jews. And the salvation of the Gentiles. What is going on? This is a new thing. And Jesus said to his, to his disciples, uh, I don't think I'm going to quote this verse completely. Like he said, uh, those things that you retain, I will retain. Those things that uh, you know you don't agree on, I don't agree on. Again, I'm not quoting that verse quick, uh, completely. Forgive me, Lord. So what the disciples and apostles are doing is they're sitting down and they're going to make rules. And God's going to abide them to the rules that they set. That's where it means. That's not for a pope. That's not for a cardinal, a, 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 a people of cardinals. That was for the disciples because God knew they were going to sit down in Acts 15 and they're going to make some rules concerning people who are not Jewish and not under the law. So here we go, verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost, it's approved of the Holy, Holy Spirit, and to us, the disciples, apostles, to lay upon you, Gentiles, no greater burden than these necessary things all right you're not under the law it's already been discussed read the previous uh, of this chapter but here's some rules and commandments for gentiles that you ought to be good doing that ye abstain from meat offered to idols well Meat is not necessary pork, chicken, or ham. It's also flour we saw in Leviticus. So when you take your little cakes and offer them to the Queen of Heaven, that's meat. And James and Peter and Paul said, when you offer those meats to the idols, you're not supposed to do that. Throw the mass cookie out the window. That wafer, according to the apostles and the disciples, which is supposed to be the ascension of the apostles all the way through the popes. The, the apostles' succession, however you say it. I don't need to know it. You know, the popes say that they go all the way back to Peter. But when it comes to those meat offerings, the idols that, the, that they said those Gentiles are not to do, that church is Gentile is doing it. So the way for the mass is wrong. And what's going on over Asia, what they would do all over Asia is the shambles, which is the meat market. They would offer those gods to the deities of those cities. If Diana was your god of your city, you would offer your meats to Diana. And then they would go back and sit down with the same meat and dine. Sort of they, like they did with the golden calf. They offered to the golden calf and then they sat down, rose up and play. And there are a lot of Baptist churches out there who have meats dedicated to gods. We're not going to have a Sunday night service because we had a fellowship all day long. And two of those churches I know are completely worldly and beyond. One of them I didn't even visit before I left. Alright, so... Meat to offer dials. Abstain. Don't do it. And from blood. Oh. That part of law that we just read in Leviticus. There it is. Now you don't need to be circumcised. You do not need to te keep the Ten Commandments. You do not need to bring a bullock to the temple. You do not need to get a ram, sheep, blah, 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 or for the sheep in the morning. You don't have to do that. Of all the laws, everything in the law, but abstain from blood. There it is. 
It's a church doctrine set by the apostles, set by the disciples, with Paul, Peter, and James present. No blood eating. There it is. So there goes your other half of your mass. When you hocus pocus, fee fi fo, eat plurmis, whatever you do, and you change, as they will tell you that is changed to blood, you violated the law and you violated the apostles and disciples' law for the Jew. I mean, for the Gentiles, excuse me. And it's not necessarily a law because, you know, abstain is you have a free will, but it'd be best if you don't do it. And we also read about where there's an animal that has died, whether by its own or by somebody, something else, and you eat it. Do you know exactly what your meat has happened before it hits your plate? Did that animal really die by the butchering things of the, or did they just find it in the field? Okay, pick it up and throw it and put it with the meat. Have you looked down at your plate and seen red stuff floating around after your meal? Called blood. Now under grace, I tell you, but I, I don't do it all the time. It's when I think about when I read the Bible and get something like this, then I will do it. Have you confessed your sin of having blood and maybe an animal that you don't remember in ignorance that we read in 4.2? Leviticus, have you ever come and say, Lord God, I don't know if I violated anything wrong with the, with the food I've had. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure if maybe that cow that they butchered, I had that nice, maybe they did give it to Allah or somebody or whoever. Or... Have you ever confessed your sins of what you eaten and not know what, what you eaten, what has happened, according to what the Bible says? I think it would be safe to say, hey, 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my sins, if it's a sin, then God's going to forgive and he's going to forget. Now, I'm going to tell you as a Christian, there's only one thing I know, and, and probably a whole bunch of other stuff you could tell me. I know one thing for sure. Steak tartar, it ain't for a Christian, according to that verse. One other thing I'm definitely sure of, and uh, this is where i got to end because I don't know anything else about this, thank God. Eating your steak very rare, rare, with the juices of blood, that's not for a Christian. Blood pudding, blood pudding that's okay, blood pudding. There's stuff out there, I guarantee there's menus out there where you're eating with blood. It has to do definitely with blood. Blood sausage. Blood sausage. And my wife knows more on those things than I do, being a cook. There are many times I grew up, and we used to go to, there was a big state place in, in Mystic where we lived. And, and as a child, I looked down at that plate, it'd be cool, and here's, you know, it's red stuff. That's blood. The restaurant that went out of business called Roadkill over there. Yeah, there was Roadkill. And that went out of business because of the name. Now, we're under grace, but look what it says for the church, for the Gentiles. Blood. Drinking, eating is forbidden. Now, if you're a Christian hunter, you go out and bang, you got that deer. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Wish I could hunt. But I've been told by many hunters, not, not saved ones, but, you know, you, you drink the blood of that deer because that's the spirit or soul, or whatever. That's forbidden. Now, let me ask you a question. What we let, read in the law, which matches here, did you drain the blood of all that, that animal, uh, whether it be a meat or whether it be a fox? Did you drain all that blood out? And did you bury it? You know what kosher is supposedly? I don't know if they... I'll tell you what kosher meat is. They will take that animal, they will slish, slash it in the neck. And then they will hang it upside down. I think I believe that part. Of it. I'm not sure about that. But they hang it. And they let all the blood drain out. And then they butcher it. I don't know if American companies go so far to do that. With time and how much things cost. And you know we got to get the job done right away. At the least expense we can do it. I don't know if American products will be as good as the Bible said. It would be good just you know Lord. Thank you for this meal. I, I really appreciate this meal. And. If there's any ignorance of what is in this meal that I'm not supposed to do, Lord God, forgive me. 
and from things strangled. It's putting a rope or something around an animal killing it. That is not going to take the blood out. There's no way to bleed. And from fornication, that's good. I mean, that's a great thing. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not do fornication. From which, if ye keep yourselves, if ye you don't do these things, ye shall do well. Very well. Now let's get a verily, verily. Acts 21, 25. Verily, verily. Again, the subject is save Gentiles. And when you go through this chapter, you're going to see Jewish people are keeping the law. But the question is, they are living in Jerusalem amongst unsaved Jews. Okay? If you want to be a mission, which I've been told you can't legally by the, by the government of Israel. But if you wanted to be a missionary in Israel. And you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, the King James Bible. you got to do some things that the law says. Not because of salvation, but because of the people you're living with. And dealing with. Paul took Timothy and had him circumcised. Well, Timothy was saved. Paul was saved. And we're not under the law, but Timothy's going to deal with Jews, and they knew his father was a Greek. They knew that he had not had circumcision. In order to reach the Jews, you got to do it. But it's not the salvation of the law. It's because of the people you're dealing with. Now, Acts 21, 25. As touching the Gentiles, which believe. There it is. They're saved. We have written. Paul has become. Now watch. Look at verse 18. We talk about the we. Look at verse 18. And the day following Paul went in with us unto James. And all the elders. So verse 25. As touching the Gentiles which believe. We. Peter, James and the elders. And Paul. We have written. The law was written, this is written, and concluded that they observe no such thing. The law. Look at the end of verse 24, which keepeth the law. We're not under the law. Save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols. We already talked about that. And from blood, and from strang from strangled, and from fornication. So verily, verily, it is wrong for a Christian to drink blood, eat blood, and anything offered to idols. A Christian should not, ought not to take part of the Mass. According to that verse. What we study in Leviticus today. A Christian. Ought not to eat blood. And if you do willingly. After you've heard what this Bible says. Then you are definitely in sin. Now we read Leviticus 4 too. Let's say you don't know. What's on your plate. What's been in your plate. What you've already put in your mouth. 1 John 1 9. Be safe with God. Be, rather be safe than sorry. Because what if you did get to the judgment seat of Christ and you're standing there and there's a long line? And how many people are in front of you? I don't know. And you say, oh, I heard this lecture on video of this guy, you know, Hayward or something, whatever his name is, who cares in heaven, I'll get a new name. And he talked about something about, you know, eating blood even as a Christian. And he said, 1 John 1 9, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive. And, he, and I did that. You know, I don't think it's wrong, but I don't think it's right. But, you know, I did it. And you watch the people in front of you who, who are supposed to study your Bible, who are supposed to rightly divide your Bible, and they had steak, and they had pork, and they was sacrificed to other gods, and there was blood in that meat when they eat it. And they stand there and say, well, what was that, Lord, that turned to ashes? 
That's all the beef and pork you ever had in your life. What do you mean? It had the blood. And you step up there and you say, wow, how come I did not get any of those ashes that they got? Because you confessed your sin. And if you confess your sin, I forgot it and it's not going to burn up. It is wrong according to the church apostles to us Gentiles do not eat blood. And it would be proper to run over to Leviticus and see what God has to say about it. And it would be proper to read Leviticus 17 and look and see how serious God is about eating blood. Now I'm saying there's nothing wrong with hunting. Now you're not in the law, but God says when you take that animal, slay it properly, and then you take the blood and, and, and cover it up. It'd be better to err reading the Bible and doing the Bible. I mean, rightly dividing the word of God is you're not going to lose your soul if you don't bury that blood. You're not going to hell if you're saved. But it'd be good that, you know what, hey, you, you at least did what the Bible told you to do, and, and would God bless you. For what the Bible says. And if you were not supposed to bury the blood. At least you got the credit is you didn't eat the blood. By the scriptures. And if you eat the blood as a Christian. What we just read in the book of Acts. In the church age. After the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. Then prepare to have something burn up. Because it's a sin. And if you sin. 1 John 1.9. And we already read, if you did it, you don't know you did it, and you did it, you're still guilty. We've seen that throughout Leviticus so far. You are still guilty even though you don't know what you're supposed So let's study and read our Bible and be right with God at all times. 